So let me uh, um, repeat what I said a few minutes ago and uh, thank you for the flexibility and explain it and tell you why, why we're waiting a few minutes. We were advised uh, when we changed location from one building to another by the town clerk who oversees our compliance with the open meeting law that because um, there was a time needed to get from one building to the other that we should not start exactly at 630. The reason that we switched rooms is those of you who are familiar with the first floor meeting room know that it is a small room if you get a large public audience. And uh, when we became aware um, in the early afternoon that a lot of there was a lot of interest in attending the meeting. Um, it was sort of uh, required that we give some quick consideration to finding a new location that would be more suitable for the number of people who might be attending. And so we really s switched locations for your comfort and um, uh, to make it more convenient for all of you to be here with us. And uh, we value your public uh, participation uh, because that's an important part of our values and our charter. Um, so um, I'm going to call the meeting to order. Uh, it, uh, we'll call it uh, 635 for you know, it's a couple minutes after that. Um, and um, I'm going to start by doing some introductions um, of first to myself and then go around the room uh, or get around the table so we can get introductions because I was told at the last meeting that some people were wondering who everybody was on the committee and uh, uh, it was a fair question and since we don't have nameplates. Um, my name is Andy Steinberg. I am uh, the chair of the finance uh, committee and I am an at-large member of the council uh, and uh, before I was a member of the select board. So Lynn? Kathy? Or Kathy, go ahead. Hi, I'm Kathy Shane, and I'm uh, vice chair of the finance committee, and I'm on the council from District 1. I'm Lynn Griesmer. I'm from District 2. I'm president of the council and a member of the finance committee. I'm Shalini Bahel Mellon. Um, I am from District 5. I'm Dorothy Pam uh, from District 3 and I'm a member of the Finance Committee. I'm Sonia Aldrich, I'm the Comptroller and the Staff Liaison for the Finance Committee. I'm Guilford Mooring, I'm from Public Works. Okay, so I want to uh, welcome everybody and explain what we're doing. If there's, yeah, um, I will in a second. Um, so, uh, for those of you who don't have an agenda for tonight's meeting and would like it uh, to have a uh, copy or something to take notes on, uh, do all of you have your agendas? I know I don't. Uh, I know that changed. It didn't. Actually, it hasn't. Uh, okay. So. Um, do you have any copies now? Yeah. Just for whoever in the public would be interested. Thank you. Um, we're not going to necessarily do the agenda in the order that it is listed entirely. Um, but um, the, um, except for the minutes of January 16th meeting, uh, which we're not prepared in time for to consider them tonight. Um, we are going to address all agenda items. We, our town manager, Paul Bachelman, um anticipates being here later, but uh, the competing meeting that's going on at Town Hall up in the council chambers, for, uh, also known as uh, the town room, is the regional school committee meeting, and uh, he had to attend the, the first part of the uh, regional school committee meeting, so he um, plans to be down here in about an hour. So I want to make sure that um, we have a chance to hear um, him and hear his comments 
um, if any, during our discussion. So uh, we wanted to go through um, some preliminary parts of the meeting agenda first. What I'm proposing to my to the committee then, and I want to um, ask the committee's input in this in now, is uh, do we start by talking about the review of the uh, plan for the four major projects so that um, there's at least an un um, a full understanding since we now had the PowerPoint from the 2017 presentation um, available to us to look at. And uh, uh, Lynn has it available on the computer that she's using. Um, so, and see, and to just briefly go through that and to the key points. Um, it, the, so once we know how um, we were, we fund um, major projects, uh, then we can get to the other parts of it. My suggestion would be that um, we see how much interest is in additional public comment um, before we get into the full discussion and get into and do public comments. I do have copies from Sonia of the recommended motions for our consideration, the, 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 um, the motions that would have to be passed. And there are actually two motions, um, so I will distribute those. Um, and uh, that should allow us to be ready when, uh, hopefully when Paul gets here, to uh, see what questions we have of him and final discussion. And Guilford and Sonia are here to provide answers to questions too. And the last thing that I wanted to explain to everybody is, is that uh, uh, Town Manager Bachelman and um, all of the uh, members of the council that you see here and Sonia were all at the Mass Municipal Association meeting the, on uh, Friday and Saturday. However, only Paul was able to go to a late afternoon Friday session because we were all concerned Saturday. about, or Saturday, I mean, because we were all concerned about getting back before the snowstorm really hit. And he was staying over in Boston for a um, little bit extra this weekend. So he was able to go to a meeting, uh, or a session that was put on by Mass Department of Transportation, which they talked about the various grant programs that they have, including the bridge grant program. And uh, so he did send us copies of um, the two slides from the PowerPoint from that presentation regarding the bridge thing, uh, project funding proposal, but uh, it would allow us to um, ask him questions um, since he was there, if we were um, able to get his attendance for that part of our meeting. So that's what I would suggest. Is that agreeable? Okay, so then we um, would uh, proceed by going on to talk about um, the 2017 plan. And uh, what this was, uh, for those who are not familiar, is that uh, it was a meeting, actually it was 2016 uh, in September, as you, uh, Do you want me to try to project this? If it can be projected, let's see. This may be on my technology capabilities. See if it is. Um, Do you have it on a...
And I, I think I might as well be very explicit right now as to why this is an important topic on, how, on funding this. It is a major capital project. It has to be funded from the same sources of other major capital projects. And uh, the um, sum total of the amount that we're being asked to uh, transfer from free cash, which is part of the town reserves, is $440,000, and uh, the, uh, the, if that comes out of reserves, I think that the question the Finance Committee at least should be aware of as it gets into its discussion is um, how that might affect the four major projects. Shall we? So the transfer is for, uh, that is for the temporary and the permanent bridge, or? So is the temporary bridge being considered a capital project as well? It is a capital project. It, uh, and uh, so there's two seats up here. Do you want to uh, um, maybe before we while well, Gilford's doing that? Let me hand these around to the committee first. Yes. Um, there's two part there's two motions here. One motion is for um, the 2125. That is for the temporary bridge, if we move forward with the temporary bridge. Could you talk up, please? Sure. Up. The um, second motion is what, for... What was the first? The first motion was for 212500 to be transferred from free cash, and that would cover the temporary bridge, if, if so voted. The second motion is for the 227.5, which is for the engineering services, which needs to be paid whether we do temporary or permanent anyway, so it's all, so that would have to be voted. And that's to replenish what's been charged to the road repair fund and to finish the engineering services. And the, so the two, sum total of those two is 440,000. Yes. So if we recommended both motions, we are then recommending to the council, which will make the final decision, the transfer of $440,000 from free cash. Yes. So in terms of the permanent bridge, $227,000 and $500,000, would be part of that, so the rest of the permanent bridge would come from state grant. Is that correct? Because that's not uh, enough for the bridge, is it? That's a uh, question that uh, was ultimately might hold, uh, unless uh, Guilford, I don't know if you have any answers <coughs> to that initially, but. So we confirmed a couple of things. One, our application to the grant program has been forwarded to Mass DOT. Mm -hmm. Um, they've extended this grant period. It was originally supposed to expire October 31st. It's been extended until April 1st. So we probably won't hear anything until May about the grant. The second thing is, is that the maximum amount of the grant is half a million dollars. So you would add that to the two, in terms of the permanent bridge, 500,000 plus the 227, that would be it for the permanent bridge? Or the, is no. it subtracted? Is it added or subtracted? If you look at the page three, so the 227 okay. is engineering costs, the permanent bridge is 925. Okay. So you have to subtract half a million from that. So we still owe another 425 for the permanent bridge. We have to figure out the 425. Okay. And that will not. There's no grant money. You can only go to the grant one time for one bridge. Mm -hmm. the, sm the small bridge, the municipal small bridge program only gets one grant, yes, and mm -hmm. half a million dollars is all you can get. Mm -hmm. Yes? Um, I just have a, a, a follow-up question. If 
the max is less than the total cost, and we started doing some initial work. We were told last time mm -hmm. that any initial work we spent would not be covered by a grant. But is there a way we could finance part of it and not interfere with getting the 500000 or do we have to wait until we get the contract for the 500000 No, we, we can keep doing our work and keep moving with town funds, and that doesn't affect whether or not we get the half a million dollar grant for the project or anything like that, as long as we don't enter into a contract for bridge replacement before they give us the grant to sign. So. so the fact that we've started the engineering work is not going to affect our chances of getting the grant? No. The fact we started engineering work tells them we have a shovel-ready project. They like shovel-ready projects because they like to give people money and then they like to see if people spend the money and build what they say they're going to build immediately. Mm -hmm. So that does help us. Is there a seasonal period during which you can build a bridge or not? <clears throat> uh, well, Mill, the Mill River Bridge is being constructed right now. They're actually doing, uh, they're pouring concrete in this weather, which I was like, really? But they have a cold weather plan, they're heating the concrete, they have blankets. They, sometimes they actually have a guy staying there to make sure it doesn't shut off by itself. So you can build year round if you want to. The implication we're going to have, or the only um, limitation we're going to have, is the fact that there's uh, turtle breeding season. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and during turtle breeding season, you have to do certain things, and it may actually stop you from doing construction during turtle breeding season. And that's in the red month. Red month. Um, I haven't got it confirmed, but it's there's a section in the spring, so there's just the time in the spring. Sometimes the salamanders come across the lake. Uh, I think the conservation committee did mention April. Or it's like April, April, May, June. Yeah. But I haven't. When it starts. But it's up to the it's up to the um, natural heritage people to tell us mm -hmm. when and how that's going to affect us. They could set up, we could set up a plan where we have people watching the whole time during construction, and that might mm -hmm. suffice to let us build during the turtle breeding season. So there's different ways to, to deal with it. We won't know until we get the permit. Okay. The presentation. So. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so uh, to, to get this. Um, What we should do is skip the first three slides for sure. And then on the fourth side slide, just to let you know that what we're what this is uh, just doing is for those of us who looked at the last time and were looking for the debt service, um, this is showing how our debt service has been over a period of years, remembering that we are currently in the very right hand box. Uh, it is currently FY, yes. Um, this report is old, it's a couple Please years on. old. So 2018, I can tell you it was 2.8% was our debt. Can you speak up 2.8%? 2.8. That's very low. At the end of fiscal year 18, which is June 30. It was low. And of course, um, I want to remind everybody, when the, what this was about was is we have four major projects. One is the fire station to get a fire station located um, south of downtown and more accessible um, to the larger part of the community. The second is the Department of Public Works building, which is the most the, the best location identified for the fire station in the building that is extremely antiquated and makes it very difficult to provide the range of services that the department needs. The elementary school project, however, it ends up being done, and we don't know. I mean, this was before the last override vote and before town meeting then uh, chose not to issue the bonds in the library. So that all, there, there was a question was, as it, this meeting was about the question of how do we fund all of these projects and can we fund all of these projects? So as we go through to the next slide, uh, what um, there, bring 
what this is generally trying to show is the debt service per capita is an annual expense over the years. And uh, one of the things to um, the purpose is to show that there's a goal of trying to be even in every given year so that um, the burden on the budget and the burden on the taxpayers is relatively constant over time. Um, I'll keep doing it. I'm not sure which is. You yeah. can use the pointer. Oh, it's pointer too. Uh, um, the uh, this is just showing our debt service uh, per capita compared to other communities using FY14, and you'll see on the very right hand side uh, is Amherst, and we're relatively low compared to the other communities that were shown on this slide. Going through to the next one, uh, this is showing the uh, debt service. Um, that's been committed for various types of funding. The blue is the general uh, budget, um, things that are funded out of taxation the, uh, in general terms. The red is the Community Preservation Act amounts, which are uh, funds that were borrowed and are being repaid through CPA funds. And the green is the regional schools. Um, and uh, uh, our share um, of the regional schools, go ahead, which is divided. And uh, this is just then switching to show what our reserves are as a percentage of the budget. Our goal is to have reserves somewhere between 5 and 15 percent, which is the red and the green line. 2016 is the right hand line. And the purpose of that was to demonstrate that what had been happening was the, it was an attempt to increase reserves over a period of years. And this was uh, a policy that had been created uh, in part by John Musanti and part by Sandy Cooler in order to make reserves available to pay for a part of the um, four major projects I described. Go ahead. Um, and this is just um, showing, um, explaining uh, the so assumptions behind the sources. So I, I'll just read it. That eight percent of taxation in FY17 uh, was what the capital budget was. That that's what we would use for capital purposes. Out of the uh, budget was uh, calculated on a percentage of taxation. The uh, CPA funds should be the source for any CPA projects. Cont we continue to pursue grants and use the ambulance funds to the extent possible. And we continue to use um, enterprise funds for enterprise capital needs. And there's a quick explanation of what that is about is that um, the uh, water, sewer, transportation, and solid waste um, pro uh, parts of our government are funded by fees through what are known as enterprise funds and uh, the capital associated, for example, putting in new sewer lines uh, would come out of the sewer fund and be paid for from sewer fees, not from taxation. Uh, going on to the next slide, <coughs> this is on capital expense assumptions. And uh, I won't try and read all of them uh, because it's going to get too long if I do and explain each one. But it, uh, this PowerPoint is available on the web on the town website under uh, the budget section, I believe, for the year it was made. We can confirm that. We've gone to the next uh, slide. So what we're trying to do here is show an ongoing. Uh, capital expenses um, and, and how they, how our capital expenses um, are in comparison to the 8% of uh, resources that, that um, 
we generally try and make available, which is an indication of uh, this is ongoing debt service and expenses to show that there is some excess capacity within uh, the amount that we try and target um, and uh, go on. So I can, we just remove this. This is uh, was calculations on the four major projects. Um, and uh, so then we move into describing the scenario for funding all four major projects. And they include, in the, the bottom line conclusion is that if we move the capital budget up to 10% of taxation from 8%, which is a process we have now been doing, that if we use debt exclusion overrides <coughs> for the elementary schools and the library, uh, maintain long-term focus and budgeting, uh, build the stabilization fund through FY22, and then, and again, have to remember that this was <coughs> prior to the, the school project consideration. All of this will need to be redone, but it's how the thought process goes and how the process goes uh, in that, uh, then we would, could use stabilization fund to reduce the expense for debt service in years FY24 to 30 and borrow um, the, the remainder um, through debt exclusion override and otherwise. So I think I, I'm going to skip the rest of the slides. I just wanted to give a flavor for what it was about as to why um, anything that that we do uh, regarding either permanent or temporary bridge will have some effect on the four major projects. The amount of that effect is a matter that we will be discussing a little bit, but um, it's not a question, you know, the first question is will it have an effect? And the answer I think is fairly clearly yes. Um, is there, is that understandable? Um, does the committee have any questions about that part? I Dorothy? Have, yeah. On the slide with the, um, the line the, the, over the blue, when it says ongoing capital expenses, I'm going to assume that that word ongoing does not mean the new capital projects that we're considering, but would include things like replacing a boiler, replacing a roof, um, major things that we have to do for buildings, but not the, the, the new borrowing we're going to do for new things. Is that correct? Sonia, the answer is yes. I believe yes. Okay. All right. So this room is, has nothing to do with, this means we can handle what we're doing, and there is a little bit of extra that we could put on our capital projects, but I don't know how much. Yeah, this is, um, this is back when we were still at 7.5%. We were going to 8% for fiscal year 18. For um, or eight and a half percent, nineteen. Right now we are at nine percent for fiscal year nineteen, and for fiscal year twenty we're projecting, we're projecting our um, our projections are set at nine and a half percent. Whether we can keep that and balance the budget or not, that's still to be determined. Mm -hmm. But we're slowly increasing our um, our spending on capital, and like I explained in our presentation, we do a percentage of the levy. And um, out of that percentage, we pay for all the debt service, mm -hmm. and what's left is what we consider cash capital that right. you can spend right. straight okay. out without borrowing. Mm -hmm. right. And of course, the more debt service you put on, the less that cash capital becomes. I want to mention two other or three other pieces that were not in this presentation. This was before the uh, net the zero energy bylaw for municipal buildings which applies to schools, DPW, and fire, does not apply to the library. It was before the 1.5% for art bylaw, and uh, that still has to be approved through the legislature uh, through the Home Rule Act. Um, so neither of those two are in there in terms, and the costs projected on the buildings are not based on schematic design, and therefore are truly and completely estimates and should not be quoted as real costs. The other thing it does is make an assumption of state money to supplement the book, so the school, and state money to supplement the library. 
Yeah, Gilford. It's also based on the 2016 capital plan. Mm -hmm. So our capital plan is a 10-year plan. Each department puts together and submits. So this was based on that plan from 2016. It, there may have been changes that have happened since 2016. I know mine has changed a little bit. Good, show me. So, so where do we comment, or where do we create reserves for maintenance, like if there's emergency repairs, and just as an example, the station road bridge, is, would that come out of the cash reserves, the general reserve fund? Yeah. Yeah. It would need to because we've already set the tax rate for fiscal year 19. So once you set the tax rate, you can't estimate with revenues. You have to use funds that are already in the bank, and that would be reserves. So that is indeed used for emergencies or yes. unexpected maintenance or repairs or placements. Right. One time use for a one time um, cost. And of course, um, which gets back to the point of having gone through the quick review of the how you finance the, that number of major projects is that um, what you take from reserves for that purpose then becomes unavailable for other purposes down the line, including the, the four major projects. Uh, but it is where we would have to fund it from. Mm -hmm. Anything else? That no, no, just what we just heard also about the permanent bridge is the grant is only going to fund roughly half, it, it, roughly half. So there's another almost $500,000 that has to come from our flow of capital. Yes. Yes. Um, so I um, wanted to just. Uh, for opening it up to the public for a few minutes. Um, I wanted to see if there's anything else from the committee in the way of questions about how we're financing, how we would finance four major projects should we choose to go forward with them, and uh, how we would be financing the bridge. And you've now seen the motions that we would have to be recommending. Um, ultimately, these would, um, are, Motions would have to be passed by the council as a whole, uh, but uh, our uh, choice is whether to make a recommendation to the council or not, and what we would recommend, which we will have to get to a little bit later. Right. Correct. Right. I, I just have I have one question about mm -hmm. the flow. Um, you started out with the temporary bridge plus the design comes to 440. Uh, you know, that number, and then we've got the second number for the per our share of the permanent bridge. Our share, the town share of the permanent bridge, would that have to come out of the current year budget, or would it could be the FY20 budget? So we don't, <clears throat> yeah, we haven't, I mean, we're only asking for what we've spent so far sure. for the temporary. Mm -hmm. yep. So then we can take the permanent bridge and put it into the regular capital plan, and, and process it that way, or if the council and the town manager so desires, we could do it outside the capital plan. Okay. But it hasn't been decided how to handle it, the permanent bridge yet, I guess is the way to answer that. The other piece, if I'm correct, is that this is a application to the state, and they may or may not fund it. Correct. Okay. okay. Which means... But we do know what the maximum now is. Yes. Exactly. That's yes, Jill. Are we discussing the the station road bridge um, right now, or are we just discussing the capital? We, well, this what we've sort of flowed into the question of mm -hmm. general discussion about the station road bridge mm -hmm. um, in expenses and how it would be covered. Um, we've gone to the permanent bridge mm -hmm. because it ties into the grant question. We wanted to get, make sure that's understood first. Um, and then we'll have to move backwards into uh, whether to do the temporary bridge after we've sort of got to understand if, we do, if the permanent bridge is um, the highest on the list, then how we get that gets funded first is the discussion. Do you have something else? I have a question. Yes. Um, 
So we can have several different questions. Um, we could say we're going to build no, no temporary and no permanent bridge. We could say we're going to build both no matter what. Or we could say we'll build a temporary bridge and a permanent bridge if it's funded. In which case, we would have a temporary bridge which could last for a certain period of time and sometime during which time we might find another way to fund that permanent bridge if we had to do it on our own without a state grant or we would be applying again in another grant year. Is, is that a possibility? Yes, it is. Okay. We, get an, <coughs> we, um, we automatically, we submitted, we're automatically in this round of grants and then if we're not funded in this round, we automatically roll to the second year of funding. Mm -hmm. And if we're not funded in the second year, we have to reapply. But we can keep reapplying mm -hmm. until they cancel the program or <laughs> fund it. Mm -hmm. Or we do something else. Yes. Uh, so I was wondering if this is the right time. I just wanted to summarize all the discussions we had last time and this time. And based on some research I've been doing, based on what I've been hearing from residents, and I made a summary of some of the key points about this before we can, uh, so is this a good time to do that? Um, trying to, I, 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 I'm only pausing because I'm wondering if it's something you wanted to wait until Mr. Bachelman's here. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's what I was thinking, unless... Uh, mm -hmm. um, I guess what I'm looking for in the way of public comments, but of course I can't tell you what you're going to say, because you have a right to say what you're going to say. Uh, but uh, certainly there was somebody who had a hand up with a question, and I want to make sure that if you had questions about well, the financial piece that we've been starting to talk about to do that, uh, we did hear a lot of information at the last meeting about uh, the need for the bridge, both permanent and temporary. Uh, certainly, uh, uh, if there's additional information to offer, uh, we want to hear additional. But if you were at the last meeting, you know something was offered at the last meeting, please consider it. So I'm just going to ask. Uh, so I get an idea of how many how many people are wanting to speak now with questions or comments. So I see about five or so. Um, you do not have a question at this point. You, yes. Yeah, actually, I do have a question. Because yeah. you had your hand up earlier. I did, yeah, it was about your presentation. Um, so you can count me in there. Okay. We you want to start? So we, we need sure, to sure. I'll, I'll and take good, it. please give your name because our note taker would like to make sure that we get the names for the minutes. Sure. Uh, my name is Amin Denai. Uh, the question I had, it's, I just want to make sure I understood what you said. When you concluded the presentation, you said that the takeaway is that the temporary bridge will affect the capital projects that you're considering. And I, I didn't I didn't know that until you said it, so I want to make sure I understand um, how the slides show that. What I saw, one thing that I saw, if you could incorporate this in your answer, is that our debt load is, seems to be very low relative to the other towns that were shown on that slide. Um, so I'm wondering why having a temporary bridge needs to take away from the other projects you mentioned? Um, I guess I'm sorry if I created the impression that it made it impossible um, but I'm no, you uh, said it would meant to say it would make it more it would raise the, the amount that would have to be funded from something other than reserves. What it would probably mean is that to the extent that um, we take a significant sum because of this unexpected expense from reserves or what are free cash, which is a part of reserves, then those money that money is unavailable for the capital projects. 
and we would have to go to another place within the, the whole scenario, it would mean probably that we would have to ask for a slightly larger override, either for the library or the schools, as a portion of, their, of those projects um, in order to be able to fund it. And uh, it would have an ongoing effect on future taxation. Uh, but I wouldn't say it would be a large effect because we were talking, it depends upon the amount of, that we would end up and just gets into the question of whether we get the grant for the bridge, right. the permanent bridge. Right. Yes. So yeah, go ahead. So the, since it's only $170,000, do we need to put it on the taxpayers? Couldn't it be just an extra debt that we take? Well, all debts yeah. end up going to the taxpayers because they have to repay it. Well, or come from our budget. And, and from what I understand, the general reserve is maintained and kept in order to meet emergencies such as this. In part, yes, but in part what uh, I was pointing out is that, that what are fairly high level of current reserves mm -hmm. was built in part in order to be able to help fund the four sure. major projects without putting as much extra future debt burden on taxpayers. Mm -hmm. So that's where the relation is. Does that the answer? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm gonna go then, what I'll just do is I'm gonna go this way around and look to for hands. It's like just ahead. a question, not a comment. So it looks like the, my name is Niels Christensen. The oh, net, Niels Christensen, I did one, trillion way. The net cost of having the temporary bridge is two hundred and twelve thousand five hundred dollars. Is that correct? Because the other expenditure would be have to be made anyway. Is there some uh, of that can, that can be recovered when the bridge is no longer necessary? I think we talked about that last time. Yes yeah. and no. Yes and no. Um, I think several of the counselors actually had a discussion with our consultant during the MA conference and. It's, we're gonna, if you're going to just have this temporary bridge in place for a year, you'll probably have something that may be usable somewhere else and something you can on off or sell. You might even try, if it's only gonna be there for a year, you know you're only gonna pay 12 months of rental payments. If you don't know how long it's gonna be there, if we say we're not gonna replace the bridge until we get the grant and it takes three years to get the grant, our rental payments will go up so we wouldn't wanna rent it, we'd wanna buy it. Um, if we know we're going to be in this for a long time with a temporary bridge, we might want to take more time and put a better, more <coughs> appropriate temporary bridge in. Um, so as you start playing all the different options, it affects your value of the temporary bridge. Um, <coughs> I was telling the town manager, I mean, we could always use it to replace some bridge somewhere in the watershed if we had to, but it would just be taking a really nice bridge <clears throat> sticking it on a logging road somewhere um, if we went very far with it. So there's a chance to get some recovery out of it. There's a chance we may get no recovery out of it. Because it sounds like it could take more than two years to get the permanent bridge, quite a bit more. And, and it's a little scary to hear about the important project in North Amherst that's taken 14 years. <laughs> well, it took Atkins Corner. We took almost 20 years to do Atkins Corner right. roundabouts. So for 20 years to have a temporary bridge. <laughs> I didn't start acting before. <laughs> so I was in high school when it started. <laughs> I actually was. <laughs> Did you want to speak? No, go yeah. ahead. Uh, I have a, 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 qu a question and, and then a comment, and I'll, I'll say them both so that you can respond. I'm Peter Barrick. I, I live on Woodlot Road. Uh, the, the question is one of proportion. Uh, clearly, all money is fungible, and if you're spending money from reserves on a temporary bridge, then, you're, then you have less money in the same fund to spend on other capital projects. No, no one would argue with that. But it would help my understanding to know whether we're talking about, let, let's you, you just use a round number. Say it's a million dollars for the bridge project that's coming out of reserves. Uh, is this a million dollars out of anticipated future capital expenditures of a hundred million dollars? 
or of anticipated capital expenditures of $10 million. Uh, because clearly, uh, to me it seems, if it's a, a, a relatively small piece of a very big number, uh, then you, you take it seriously, seriously as an expense, but nonetheless its impact over in the long run is going to be fairly modest. Uh, if it's 25 percent of your future capital expenditures, then you should worry about it more. So that, that's one thing I would hope that, that you would speak to. Uh, the other is that I'm going to say something which my neighbors may or may not agree with, but that seems to me is implicitly coming on the table. Uh, from my point of view, uh, as a regular traveler on Station Road, the crucial thing is to get the road open as quickly as possible. A temporary bridge does that. Once it's open, I can be very patient. Uh, if, if it serves the town well and serves all of us as citizens well, uh, to delay for a year or two or three on installing a permanent bridge while you explore other funding opportunities, so be it. Uh, the road's open. Uh, I would much prefer, if it comes to a choice in your minds between a temporary bridge and a permanent bridge, getting the temporary bridge uh, and then worrying about a permanent bridge at some future date because the crucial thing, as I said, is to get the road open. If people disagree with me, I hope they'll speak up. But I don't agree. Agree. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 I also find that the current bridge is like a temporary bridge because two cars can't really go and cross at the same time. Okay. Let me just continue looking around. I know there's somebody Perfect. standing in the back. Mark. Yeah, I just had a, a kind of general question then for clarification. I mean, we have capital projects, which mainly are buildings, school buildings, uh, fire station, whatever. And then we have, you know, infrastructure projects, you know, really fixing a, a road like that North Amherst intersection that, that really needs work and is a big job. And, uh, you know, bridges, road paving, whatever. They're sort of infrastructure now, so they aren't necessarily considered capital, you know, long-term capital expenses. Then are they, or, or how are you differentiating those? They're in, they're in this, I mean, we can answer, but they're in the same budget. It's called capital because it's not people. <laughs> you know, so it's in. So it's all part of the same. All, all the road infrastructure projects are put into the cap, joint capital plan. Mm -hmm. So when you saw on the graph the little um, lines that showed that we were being able to maintain our capital plan, that was maintaining infrastructure. That includes replacing roofs. That includes replacing boilers. Um, <clears throat> so that was in there. The issue you have, though, is we have a 16 to $20 million backlog of road repairs. We know that. Our, consultant that did a survey of our road system came up with those numbers, 16 to 20 million, uh, or 21 million, mm -hmm. so in that range. Uh, that does not include the North Amherst intersection project. That does not include uh, things people want to do with just repairing s existing sidewalks. Uh, that doesn't include, um, well, that's, that's basically, it doesn't inc include any intersection improvements, it doesn't include any si existing sidewalk improvements. Mm -hmm. And then there's things people want, like they want traffic calming on Southeast Street, they want, they, want new, um, they want new sidewalks on East Pleasant, they want a new sidewalk, new multi-use path on North Pleasant. Those aren't even included, in, those are just mm -hmm. wants, yet they haven't been put into the pie. Um, so all that is included in the capital plan, and yes, there's a chunk that's not even Mm -hmm. Figured out how you're going to pay for in that 10 year capital plan. But so, an emergency repair of an existing road, which is the case of trying to get a temporary bridge to get this road open, since it's the only east west road between town center and Bay Road, so that's still called a capital, mm -hmm. I think, even if it's really an emergency repair. Yes, because we, we have emergency. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, we have boilers that go out in buildings. That's an emergency repair. It may not be on the capital plan, but it's an emergency repair. So yes, this would be the same consideration. Okay, kind of really keep moving around. I did others in the corner in the center, so go ahead. Hi, uh, David Torrey. I was not able to make it to your last meeting on Wednesday morning at 11 o'clock. Uh, so an observation. 
from someone who drives out that way um, daily. The intersection of Stanley Street and Route 9, if you were to come down Stanley Street and take a right turn and to go west on Route 9 at 5.30 in the afternoon, when the people are leaving the campuses and leaving town from work, mm -hmm. you have a, about 150 feet that you can see to the left. There are five or six old pine trees right there. The sight line is horrific. And it is not a question of when there's going to be a serious accident. It's just what day it's going to happen. This is an inconvenience, and it's a safety inconvenience. It's more than just an inconvenience. And I apologize, but I wasn't able to get to your Wednesday 11 o'clock meeting, and I do hope you would all go and look at that intersection at 5.30 on a weeknight and take a look at that and tell me that that's what you want to do for the next two years. Now there was somebody in this. Yes. Uh, um, was I um, accurate in saying, oh, Ernie May uh, Station, 366 Station Road. <laughs> um, I'd just like to ask if the, um, uh, am I correct in observing that uh, debt service, which is debt service to operations, which is currently 2.8%, is projected to go up to about 8%? Is that what you're in the total capital plan? No. No. No, um, the 2.6% is what our current debt service is. The 8% is what the percentage of the levy that we are going to, that we um, dedicate to capital and debt service. Okay, just from observing this, uh, the same condition in the, uh, at the university, um, I understand that Standards and Poor's regards 8% as kind of an upper limit on uh, debt service for public uh, institution for public entities. Um, so that um, is what we're way on the low end, even of, not only if compared to other towns, but also compared to uh, bond rating agencies. Uh, second point is that, that that doesn't alone represent our financial condition, because in order to represent the financial condition of the town, you have to take deferred maintenance into consideration also. So I think that our, our debt service to operations is very low, but our deferred maintenance is extremely high. And um, so that uh, you really have to balance the two, uh, the two aspects of the town's financial position because you can't continue to operate without appropriate school buildings or without roads that work or bridges that have fallen down or boilers that have uh, gone out of service either. I mean, um, and I think that uh, so deferred maintenance is one of the things. Interest rates are still very low. And so sometimes there is a time to act and, uh, and to fix your deferred maintenance, and it's usually when interest rates are, you know, in the 4 to 5 percent range rather than the 10 to 12 percent range. Um, uh, infrastructure really uh, isn't optional. Um, you know, if I, and, and also deferred maintenance, I mean, uh, preventive maintenance is also something you might want to consider. If you can assess your bridges and see that something is within five years of failing, then you can do the planning ahead of time and, uh, and not have to go through two or three years of well, having a bridge or something out of service. I mean, I don't wait until my car blows up the engine before I change the oil. Um, the, uh, or I don't wait till my roof absolutely has got torrents of water coming into the house before I fix the, the roof. Uh, you actually do what you need to do into reserves or whatever to fix serious infrastructure problems. Um, so I would hope that the, uh, the Finance Committee will find a determination to, uh, which I think the various things which have occurred in, politically in the town over the last uh, uh, 12 months or so, um, reflect a, a feeling on the town that it was time to um, uh, to move on deferred maintenance and uh, to make appropriate forward motion in these in these areas and so I would reflect my neighbor's uh, comment that getting station road bridge open again is uh, is the high priority and maybe the permanent bridge has to wait a bit but uh, uh, because sorting out all these different projects with the, the amount of deferred maintenance that the town has is serious but I would strongly hope that it's time to move and get going on these things and respond to the emergencies that are there and then make significant 
planned uh, um, progress on the uh, on the, the really the biggest issues which have to do with the large buildings yes. I, I just wanted to agree totally because I have torrents of water running through my building when it rains <laughs> <laughs> Uh, thank you. Um, yes, here and then way in the back. Uh, Sigurd Nelson, I just want to echo uh, some of the points that have been made. Certainly, this is a relatively small cost in relation to uh, the total amount of uh, capital projects we're looking at. Um, secondly, the safety issue, not only on Route 9, but the other end of Stanley Street, mm -hmm. as well as now Mill Lane and Southeast Street, uh, which is uh, being used. I use it much, you know, now. I never used it before when I could go down Station Road and, and hook up with um, uh, Shea Street to get over to Whole Foods, etc. Um, but that's a very dangerous intersection. I, you have to nose way out into the lane in order on Southeast Street in order to see whether someone's coming through that bridge under the rail trail. Um, Secondly, um, doing the temporary bridge will allow us the flexibility, uh, if we don't get the grant uh, from the state on the first round, to time the permanent bridge uh, in, in a way uh, that makes, makes fiscal sense. And also looking at the, uh, the total, the, uh, the four or maybe five uh, capital projects, maybe they won't all be funded. Uh, maybe the town won't go for two overrides. Um, but this is a relatively small cost uh, that we should uh, invest in. And uh, I think the, the point made, this is in a sense an emergency. This is like a boiler blowing up. This is the bridge that's totally destroyed a road. This should be fixed as quickly as possible. We're in the back. I'm Meg Robertson. I'm at 560 Station Road. I'm just standing up because I'm all the way in the back. Um, I just wanted to concur with a lot of what people have said. I wasn't able to meet your daytime meeting also due to work schedule, but um, I do want to say that I believe this is uh, an emergency. Um, I think that the safety issues with travel <laughs> from where I live to anywhere else has become really difficult. I have a 17-year-old driver who's only got her license within about six months, and it's very worrisome to me that she has to make such difficult turns um, onto roads where the visibility is, is really difficult. She almost got in a head-on collision on Warren Wright Road because somebody came around and there's just so much more traffic, all of us going down yes. Warren Wright Road. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And the person... Everywhere. She honked loudly and the person swerved off and hit a tree. So I'm very concerned about the safety. Station Road is also in bad shape. So it's something that we yeah. should have less traffic on than more. Um, but I know a lot of us are headed that way if we need to go anywhere south. Um, if you need to go... You know, she, tra she drives herself to South Hadley for school. So, you know, it's just uh, a situation I think is very urgent. I do think that $212,000 is a, is a drop in the bucket. Um, this town has a lot of capital needs, as everybody has talked about, a lot of deferred maintenance, but this is one that is impacting a lot of people and has a real safety element. So I hope you'll consider funding the temporary bridge. Yes, one, one last round. Good. So the um, agree completely with everything everyone has said, and we were talking a lot about safety, and those those arguments are very real. But let's let's also be honest that there's also the you know we we bought a house a year ago right near there, and we buy it in reliance on access using Station Road, and it's a reasonable assumption that that road will be open, and if it goes down, the town will do whatever it can to get it open as soon as possible, especially in a town where tax rates are as high as they are. So it's, it's just, I mean, the safety arguments are real, but I would encourage all of you, any of you who don't live near there, to try to put yourself in the shoes of someone who does live there and uses this on the, absent this issue, would use this road on a daily basis, mm -hmm. multiple times. I use this for work, I use this for everything. And the idea of this being down for two years is, frankly, a joke, especially when we have in front of us a proposal that is very reasonable in terms of cost to get it open in the short term. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Otherwise, because I'm going to then turn to the committee. 
just uh, ask each member of the committee, since uh, Mr. Rockleman has not made it yet, we said we'd only wait a certain amount, an hour, and we've right. done that. No, uh, he's not responded to my text. So he <laughs> probably tied up with um, an issue that's equally important to us than the, what he's doing at the uh, Regional School Committee meeting. Uh, so what I would like to do is hear from each member of the committee now as to where, how you would summarize where we're at and what your questions, information you'd like to know from either uh, Mr. Murray or Ms. Aldridge and uh, uh, what your thoughts are. So yeah. I, I believe I have sufficient information, um, but then I've dealt with capital for many years. Um, and I feel that this is uh, something we need to pay attention to now. Uh, Mr. Bachman, would you like to enter the room? <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> That's for you. Um, so I'm actually prepared to vote for the temporary bridge, and I am hoping that we will go ahead and in the process uh, be successful with our uh, actual um, application uh, to the state. But I do want to say we need to be prepared for the possibility that we may not get it. So that's uh, where I am. Yeah. Uh, just so that you're aware what the discussion had been for is that uh, our now understanding of the uh, DOT bridge fund program is mm -hmm. that we can apply for up to $500,000 for the bridge that the remainder would need to be paid for by the town and that uh, we hope to get it in the first year, but if we don't get it in the first year, we could uh, defer uh, in, uh, re in, in get consideration in the second year and beyond that would have to reapply but could continue to seek it. Uh, so that was our understanding. Okay, uh, Kathy. Um, I, I think I also have sufficient information and I just have a question more related to the permanent bridge um, than the temporary bridge. We're, we've got a certain amount that we've got allocated your best guess on temporary bridge on how much we'll need then there's this other part that gets up up to the 440 that is a planning process that's partly planning for permanent bridge. Would that plan stand for two years from now? So if we if we made a decision to live with temporary for two years, because when we looked at our capital budget, we can't, we don't think we can put our share of the permanent bridge in in the next six months. So, you know, whatever. So that won't be wasted funds. We'll, we'll have done that work. The only thing we have to worry about is the shelf life of the environmental work we've done. <clears throat> um, there is a shelf life to that work. Um, if we go beyond five years without actually doing construction, we may have to go back and do some of the environmental analysis, wetland delineation, uh, bank delineation. We may have to redo that. Um, and that's uh, surveying uh, analysis type thing. That's the only thing that will have it has a shelf life. But, but if we were talking about a two-year period. Right? If you're talking about a two-year period, we go for we get the permits, but we should be all set. But five years is the most you can, if we get a permit, five years is the most we can have a, a permit from the Conservation Commission and the wetland people. And then if we actually don't get a permit, our surveys are only good, delineations are only good for five years. Dorothy, you any? Um, well, I think it was Paul Bachelman who said to me at the last meeting that to enter a capital project without getting state money is not a good idea. So I am uh, at this moment uh, in favor of a temporary bridge, um, a relatively decent one, uh, while we pursue getting state funding. Though I, I had wanted to add that I thought we needed some lights with it or some kind of lights that turn on when people are on the road, you know, that they have a trip wire or something. Uh, I'm just afraid of it being, I'm, I'm thinking about driving at night. It's a one-way thing. So there isn't going to be a white line down the middle of the road. And I've seen, it's, I, it's hard to see. There's never been a line. Never been a line. Okay. 
But still, you've had a two lane road, and now it would be a one lane road. No, it was never two lanes. We always had two lanes. There was never, so it wouldn't be any different then. No, no. That was the point. We just wanted the way it was. We had a temporary bridge already. So, yeah. We just wanted to use the road. Okay, that sounds good. That sounds good. Doris, Doris, yeah. Anything else? That's it. Gentlemen? Most of the facts have already been shared. Um, the addition, additional research I did was speaking with an emergency doctor um, and finding out that uh, the time they're trying to reduce is from door to balloon. So it does indeed matter um, the extra time that it takes to get to a hospital. So that's something uh, that we have to keep in mind. Um, the other thing was just at, I did some additional math to see what is the cost to the residents. It's, uh, you know, an, I can obviously share the assumptions I've made at a later point, but just briefly stating that it's if it's a two-year delay, the residents are taking three million, uh, taking two million extra miles. I mean that's a lot of fossil fuel and uh, cost to residents. If it's three-year delay, it's three million extra miles, and the cost itself to the residents would be anywhere from two hundred fifty thousand dollars to. Three hundred seventy-five thousand um, dollars, and I'm happy to share the breakup. These are very uh, um, uh, safe uh, assumptions. I made nothing too uh, extreme. Um, we talked about the extra time as well, anywhere from ten minutes to thirty minutes, forty-five minutes, because taking Route Nine is much uh, more time-consuming, and uh, so. Instead of one traffic light when we use Station Road, we may have up to nine traffic lights that we have to um, go through. Mm -hmm. um, there's extra cost to the businesses, um, uh, the delivery businesses, Atkins, Sibby's Pizza, uh, lawn businesses, and uh, there's also, we all received a letter from a realtor saying that a house is not selling on Station yeah. Road because yeah. of um, this, this closure. Um, and I think that's pretty much it. I think that when we, you know, if you set the criteria as what are the costs to the people and the environment and the businesses, and we compare that with what the cost of the temporary bridge is, it, it's very clear what our decision should be. Uh, I think that we're reaching a point there seems to be consensus in the committee. Uh, I had sort of gone through this myself, and I guess that I view the permanent bridge as being the end goal. And uh, so I was looking at questions about timing uh, in order to sort of help me think through the question of the temporary bridge. Uh, We're uncertain about um, the availability of funds. Um, we hope that they're available quickly, but we don't know that they'll be available quickly. If we knew they were going to be available quickly, I would be not in favor of a temporary bridge. But um, it's the uncertainty that kind of puts me in a place of saying, the other, the exact opposite, that uh, we, do, uh, we probably do need to go forward and re make the recommendation to the council that the economic and uh, thing to do is to do temporary bridge uh, because we have too much uncertainty with other avenues. Uh, so at this point, um, I think it's probably worth um, sort of taking a quick look at the two motions to, to make sure that on um, each of them that uh, we know what we're going to do. And I um, do go with the second as written on the sheets of paper first uh, for first discussion because um, it's replenishing uh, money to the road repair account uh, that 
has already been committed and spent um, and is not available for the road repair account for this year if we don't do it. So it's money that's been expended on the station road bridge project already because of the emergency nature of it. It was a decision that had to be made by um, uh, the town manager and the staff and they did make that decision. At this point, uh, it's either we go without the road repair money that would normally be spent this year. Uh, and uh, given the cycle of freezing and thawing that leads to potholes, it's now becoming obvious that we might have that problem yet again, as we do every year. Uh, so, uh, so there, with the first, the I think we I first think we should go ahead and do the second motion and then get back to the first motion. All right. I will move that the town appropriate two hundred and twenty seven thousand five hundred dollars to reimburse the road repair account for the engineering service costs occurred for the station road Hopbrook Bridge replacement and to meet such appropriation transfer and to meet such appropriation transfer two hundred and twenty seven thousand five hundred dollars from free cash. Okay, so motion made and seconded. Um, this is a recommendation that to we would may be making to the council. To the council. And so it's really to recommend this to them. So That's what I, my question I was going to ask. This is just to recommend to the council. Oh, yes. yes, the council has to act as a whole. The council asks us to make a recommendation by uh, the 28th of January. Yeah, so should the friendly amendment be that we, I move to recommend to the town council? Yes. Okay. Uh, this that motion. the town appropriate. This, this motion. Okay. Okay. It's yeah. recommending this motion. Okay. Anything else? Uh, discussion? We've really discussed it already. Mm -hmm. Or any comments from town manager? No. Uh, so all in favor then of the motion indicate by raising hands so we get so it's five it's unanimous. So then uh, we get back to the first motion and uh can offer that too. Okay. Um, I move that we recommend to the town council the following that the town appropriate two hundred and twelve thousand five hundred dollars for the purchase and installation of a temporary bridge for the station road hop brook bridge and to meet such appropriation, and to meet such appropriation, and transfer $212,500 from free cash. Second. So as motion made and second, additional discussion? The only discussion I have is that I'm assuming that we've uh, been assured by our finance people that we can, tra we, we had the free cash that we can transfer and it won't undermine anything else we were planning with that. Okay. I, yes. Okay. Yeah, I, I think that the one thing that it does do, and, I, and um, the first one is money that we've spent already right. in, um, it was a question of go, for going mm -hmm. the, uh, the annual uh, road repair, spring road repair work. Uh, on this one, uh, so we've talked about it. The, it. It does have an effect on free cash, and that's why we started the conversation that we had. That if we go, um, recommend going forward with all four major projects that were previously discussed, it will have a small effect on the amount that we might have to ask for that exclusion override authority from the taxpayers. Um, it, theoretically could make it more difficult to get the override passed and we also have heard a lot from many of our citizens uh, including people who live in the area affected by the bridge that our taxes are high and uh, wanting us to do things we can to limit the growth of our taxation and uh, uh, obviously we're asking them to make that choice. I think in reality uh, it's a fairly small amount of money that we're adding to the debt exclusion and the amount of additional taxation that people would have to pay uh, in order to support this kind of additional debt is 
really small. Um, and uh, so I don't think that, in my mind, it's not enough that it's going to affect a decision to build one of the major projects if that major project is dependent upon passage of a debt exclusion of the ride later. So, any other discussion from the, any comments from the manager? Okay, uh, then let's vote. All in favor of this motion, indicate by raising hands. So again, it's unanimous. Mm -hmm. uh, so, <laughs> I think we are uh, at the end of our agenda, and uh, the only thing that I'll see is if there's any um, thoughts that the committee has, and this is a housekeeping matter we can take up, about when you would like to schedule next meeting, if you have anything now that you would like to get on an agenda. Yeah. 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 Good to see you. Could you, uh, could you take your conversation to the hall, please? The meeting is still going on. Could you take your conversation to the hall? Now? So, uh, go ahead. So I, I assume you're talking about the, the major capital projects and all the other things. Right? Yeah, not the four capital mm -hmm. projects, but the other uh, other maintenance and repairs and. Yeah. So as we get into the year, the calendar years, we will focus first on the four major capital projects in February. That's going to be our focus in February, and then later on we'll look at the larger capital, pro the other capital projects that the town mm -hmm. is taking on um, as we move through the, the calendar year. Ultimately, you'll get officially it in, in, on May 1st. That's the, when the charter calls for the information being transmitted to you. Um, along those lines, I just came from the school committee meeting, the regional school committee, the Hammer School Committee, and the Union 26 meeting, where we have made a proposal um, to share the services of the finance director for the school department, which is, who is Sean Mangano, who's the finance director, um, and we would obtain some of his time to work on the major capital projects um, because half the projects are already in the schools anyway. He's familiar with all, all the projects. He's familiar with um, um, all the players. Um, he has credibility um, amongst many, most of the people and um, so they're taking that into consideration uh, now and they will be coming back to it next Tuesday to vote on whether they approve that scenario or not. So they didn't vote to approve tonight? No, because they, you know, they're in executive session right now to discuss the, the contract because the contract is between the finance director and the regional school committee in Union 26. So it's a, um, they have to talk about what it means for his employment contract. Right. Mm -hmm. um, go ahead. Yes. Okay, just to build on Shalini's question, Paul. Um, in addition to the four big mm -hmm. projects, where when I think of the four big projects, there are all, there are potentially alternative scenarios in terms of what the price point is. I mean, Lynn pointed out that we don't have to fully scoped out what the total cost would be. I think it would be useful because most of these graphs um, that were done earlier are just showing the four big ones, and then when we hear there's 16 to 20 million of deferred maintenance of roads and others, and somehow, whether you call that the, the sixth, <laughs> you know, whatever you call it, it's a big enough number that it starts to be, you know, to what extent we, should we be planning on doing some of these pieces? Um, it was interesting, I think, on Station Bridge Road, the, some of the comments we had last time we met was the general condition of the roads feeding into all of this aren't great. So when the bridge goes out, it's on top of that. And you get those comments all over town. So just some sense of where all of that fits. Right, yeah. so I think, you know, um, 
I think on our website is the study that looked at our deferred, the, the, need, the amount of work needed to, to upgrade our roads was $12 million, so about $2 million a year in investment. We've, using Chapter 90 and town funds, we've increased our commitment to road repair last year significantly, of almost a, a million dollars. Right. So I think we're making good progress on that, and I think um, the roads in particular are getting special attention. There are a lot of, um, I wouldn't say deferred maintenance, but things that need to be done or, or to the town. You call it maintenance. <laughs> right, it's just maintenance. It's stuff yeah, that just, goes on. Just and, basic. Yeah. And the fact that we have not built a new building for the town in uh, 28 years, mm -hmm. since, since this building was built in 1990. So we're behind in terms of making an investment in our community. So it's time for us to make that kind of investment. Which, by the way, is one of the reasons our debt service is so low. Yeah. <laughs> and we've been right. able to put in reserves. Right. And so right. the reality is that debt service is going to go up. Right. And mm -hmm. we will look more like other towns once we mm -hmm. finally do what we need to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and my point was just only it's, it's easier for me to think about it all when I see these interactive charts. Because, yes, debt service is going to go up. Are we go, going up? Are we putting a permanent bridge in the mix with roads? And is it one of the big buildings? You know, whatever it is, it's so, going to go out to the bond market mm -hmm. at some point. Yeah. I, I mean, uh, for some of it. Uh, yeah. Not necessarily go, for the maintenance stuff. We don't like that going into the bond okay. market. Okay. We like to pay with that, and that's why every year we've been upping our percentage of the levy that we contribute to capital projects. For the last four years, a half a percent every year. So we've been stepping up our, our investment into our existing buildings just to make room. So instead of pouring that money into operating costs, it's going into maintenance costs. So we're at nine and a half percent. On nine percent fiscal year nineteen. We're trying to get to nine and a half percent for FY20. So that means another bunch of money that will go into capital. Um, okay. okay, so when we talk about these things, uh, people often mention um, increasing taxes on uh, senior uh, homeowners. And we do not have something that they have in New York City. I think, um, I think it was called the circuit breaker. And uh, where we'd have to decide how old, well, in other words, certain people of a certain age with a certain yearly income, and perhaps a house of a certain value, but I'm not sure if the house value is in that, um, get some kind of help in not having to have their taxes raised. And I'm just thinking this is something that we as a group should study um, and, and have, because, um, so I asked my husband, I said, so what would, what would our taxes increase? And it was going to be eight hundred, uh, maybe a thousand dollars, or whatever like that. And so I thought, okay, we'll handle it. But I thought, well, if I were somebody else, I wouldn't handle it. You know, I really wouldn't like it. And I, I'd like people to be able to vote on things that are good for the town as a whole, but not have to to vote them down because they can't handle the, the additional taxation. Mm -hmm. And has this is this something that has been discussed in the past um, as a doable thing? Mm -hmm. So, so the town is very sensitive to the impact of all the, all the taxes on, on property owners. I think Mr. Burgess explained at, at his last meeting with you, the principal assessor, about we have done pretty much everything that we're legally allowed to do for property owners mm -hmm. to receive any exemptions for seniors if they, there's a tax work off program where they can volunteer their time to, and pay less, and to pay off their taxes basically. And a lot of seniors take advantage of it and they, they do it actually partially for the funds but also because they enjoy the work. They, we've got them. We've got a lot of them throughout town and at LSSC and at the senior center. And that's only for one hundred and fifty dollars or something. I mean, I did read that, and I thought, yeah. if I'm an old lady of ninety, I don't really feel I want to go do that. Yeah. You know. Um, so, so legally, uh, unless we get a state law, there's legally nothing um, that we can do. We're not. We're not allowed to do it because this is all regulated by state law. We can't just say, wow. if you're older, you don't have to pay as much taxes. We're not allowed to do that. Mm. That is the problem that uh, in Massachusetts, municipalities are bound to a large extent by the legislature's mm -hmm. rule book, so to speak, the limits that they place on us. This is one of those areas. Um, so we're back to the agenda question for um, how soon we need to do a next meeting or can we take a little bit of time until we uh, 
start getting the school budgets and library budgets, which are probably the first we'll have to look at. April 1st. And when do you expect that will be? He said April 1st. April, okay. And capital, I, I know capital may be over in JCPC, but capital requests coming up from departments, coming from schools, that's flowing in now, will be flowing in in February when? Well, we review capital requests uh, at the time we do our budget hearings internally. So the manager looks at all those capital requests and assembles the package that will be delivered to the council. And have you scheduled roughly the time period for those now? So we've done our, uh, we've got a few more budget uh, hearings to do this week, I this think. Week, yeah. And then I think we're pretty much wrapped up with our doing our budget hearings internally. Um, then we have to assemble the information that's been submitted by our departments. So I don't, we can put a schedule together though for you. And I guess the last the last question is, has uh, anybody taken on um, organizing the first meeting of the JCPC so that we can get appointments from all of the entities that appoint to JCPC? Uh, we haven't set a, a date yet. Um, we're sort of waiting. I was hoping for uh, this, Mr. Mangano to be appointed because he will be a key person on that. And I wanted him to be in place with an agreement with the school district before we do that. So that'll probably, I guess, mid-February. Yeah. yeah. I, I have Just to have an organizational meeting, if nothing yeah. else, right? Yes. Um, it's usually at that point, you start getting, setting up a schedule and looking sequentially at each of the requests. Correct. In the way that it has uh, functioned every year that I'm aware of is that uh, there's a series of meetings set up and uh, one, one day it's uh, Mr. Morgan's opportunity and he gets to come in and uh, defend his requests and explain his requests and mm -hmm. advocate for his requests and uh, we sequentially go through the departments and uh, the school and library entities in order to then um, understand the full scope uh, and then the JCPC can work from that to make recommendations in its uh, process. So if we had um, cross-cutting questions, and I'll just do one as an example, mm -hmm. not that I'm focused on this, this, but if we wanted to say across everything in the town vehicle requests, mm -hmm whether it's conservation or DPW mm -hmm. or um, rather than doing department or department, would we go through you for some consolidated way just to get a sense of the total and what sure. it look like? You know, I can go back through old budgets yeah. and see actuals, yeah. but just wanting to get an inventory and I think you're doing an inventory now. We've you know, always had an inventory. Or, or, or always yeah. have had one. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I have a question. Yeah. Um, the question of the, of the school um, budget, we've been receiving mail saying that um, perhaps we should, there was a suggestion that was brought up that, we, that each of the, the district councilors should have a, a forum, a community forum on the schools soon. And, you know, we've scheduled, I, with, with George, we've scheduled one for March 3rd, mm -hmm. but we know that if there's going to be something that organized, that all of the districts will have a forum, that there has to be some overall coordination with school people as to who's, when they're gonna come. So we kind of feel like we can't go forward planning our March forum because we're waiting to hear what's gonna happen. So I think that that process is really in the hands of the schools. I don't think their intention is to come to every district forum because they have a different rollout mm -hmm. plan. Okay. Um, and I think that that's, that's how, they had a discussion about that last Thursday. Um, and I think uh, we're hoping uh, to have, have the superintendent and chair of the school committee come in to your meeting on Tuesday. Um, on Monday. On Monday? The 28th. Monday, yes. Yeah. Um, uh, with the president and I will be meeting with the chair of the school committee and the superintendent to work out exactly what that mm -hmm. would be. Mainly to help educate the council to understand its role, the timing of its right. role, when you become, when it, when it becomes, comes onto your plate. Mm -hmm. um, especially for the mass school business, the school, school MSBA process. That's going to be the next big decision. And then I think it's, it's, it's also they have some ideas on how they want to educate people because they have a whole sort of education plan from their perspective right. that they have to do that includes um, uh, 
interested parties like the staff, uh, parents, and then the general public. Mm -hmm. So it sometimes it might not match up exactly with districts. Um, so I, might, I should but we, so it's, go it's ahead new. And, and not worry about that being something that's going to superimpose and mm -hmm. just go ahead and have a district meeting and know that at some point this the school board will have their townwide forums and we'll hear about it. Yes. Yeah. That's okay. what I would do. I mean, you might. I mean, there's some discussion about if they have a forum, maybe we should have a district meeting at, at the you know immediately after that forum, so people are already gathered. They don't have to go out twice. So we've oh, had some conversation about that. Yeah, that's well. that's mm -hmm. some of the conversation. Because it, but they, um, you know, there are three schools but five districts, and some people are more directly aligned with certain schools. For instance, I mean, District Two is almost. A, exclusively Fort River um, but then there's a, you know it abuts district four and um, then district one and district three really focus much more on um, Wildwood and to some extent also four so it, it just doesn't break up neatly mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I do think it's very important for us as a council to have this conversation um, mm -hmm. with the school superintendent um, and um, and also ourselves to really understand what our role is and what our role is not mm -hmm. uh, because that's an even there's an even bigger not than there is mm -hmm. what it is um, so one so of the, if I could jump in one of the concerns expressed tonight at the school committee was because mm -hmm. the council hasn't really formed you know as a whole yet they were concerned about um, Mr. Mangano's time and what how, what kind of demands the, the council would put on his time mm -hmm. and because he and, and so there you know the, there aren't established paths and so that's one of the things that really high high level communication between the two bodies is really important so people aren't stepping mm -hmm. on each other's toes mm -hmm. the public will always try to involve everybody they can to take roles that might not be appropriate mm -hmm. and so I just think that it's important for the two bodies to have that sort of conversation as to yeah. When do we come into play? What is your role? What is our role? The council plays a super significant role in, in the MSBA process, and you are ultimately the ones deciding on uh, the capital projects. So it's not. So I'm uh, probably going to cut this off if, uh, because um, it's not really a right. post to part of the agenda. We said it was housekeeping to talk about the next mm -hmm. meetings and agenda, and um, that's why I need to get into the substance. Plus, the substance will be discussed on Monday. No, anyway, um, okay. so it's, we're really at the original question. It's seeming like there's no immediate need for a meeting that um, generally around the beginning of April when we start having the school and library budgets to actually look at and uh, when we start getting a better sense of what the JCPC timeline and process is. And uh, I'll continue to just inform you about that and then you can pose a request back for a meeting at any time. And if I start, and if I have a request, we need a meeting because this is what I think we should talk about, then um, I think we should, in, that'll change it. Do you see anything on the four, on the four schools the four towns uh, school budget come um, up for the group? I think it'll probably come up when the regional budget request comes up because they will put forward okay. what they think um, is the school likely to be the school committee's request for the, an assessment for each of the towns and that's the opportunity that we will have to come then and talk about it. Mm -hmm. So it, okay. it, it fits together with the budget okay. at this point. Mm -hmm. So uh, we'll save our meeting time, but expect April to be busy. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. I think we can expect and April, May. April and May. And June. <laughs> yeah, because um, we are, I mean, that's the whole thing and uh, uh, that's very different than we a budget coordinating group discussion, uh, how to, uh, redo the budget calendar under our new set of rules because the budget calendar is very different yes, than it, it was yeah. uh, when there was a town meeting that had to meet uh, much earlier than we have to make budget decisions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anything else then? 
Mm -hmm. Anything mm -hmm. else you think the new people need to know before we hit the... <laughs> you know. One thing I would recommend, I mean, some of it we were, we were sent by, uh, by Paul during the summer when we were, you know, like here's some documents you yeah, might yeah. want to look, but mm -hmm. the April 2018 JCPC report okay. laid out backwards and forwards mm -hmm. some line items that gave you a sense of um, both the, the backlog or the maintenance on road, you know, it, it was a very clear, it's tons of tables. Okay. But it's, it's a good document to look at what these larger numbers. We had a question from Peter Barrick on, you know, what does if I add the part of the bridge, the permanent bridge that's not grant funded, plus mm -hmm. this, you know, what's a million dollars out of our capital flow? I mean, you can look at these documents and say, this mm -hmm. is what that number looks like. You know, what we, we thought we would be spending every year. Um, and how much more is that or what piece of it? I just think it's a good document, mm -hmm. it's a background document, the same way these charts work. Right, and that, that is actually the working document for the JCPC process. That is a spreadsheet that uh, gets modified through the discussion process right. and uh, ultimately then becomes the crux of the report, even though the report is, uh, in the past has also been a narrative it may have to be a little less narrative, but... Right. Uh, and I just thought the actual tables, they're, mm -hmm. it, sh it shows you the magnitude of some of the other things um, and how they interact. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so why don't I just conclude with a couple of observations or, or steps. One is um, on this general question. If you have um, any member of the committee as recent they feel that they need to meet, including I've looked at these documents and I'd like to have a meeting just as uh, to, um, so that I can be educated about it. And it seems to be an item that might be of interest to the entire group and not just to, for a single person. We can take that up at that point. So um, we can leave it at that. And uh, the other is that um, I will need to write up um, a memo reporting on our recommendation, and uh, I will initially uh, do that with the, the vice chair of the committee uh, mm -hmm. after I've done a first stab at it, um, so that uh, we'll, uh, but I think that it's fairly straightforward because it's just going to reflect a little, little bit of the discussion that we had and a little bit about the process that led to uh, where we are with the recommendation. The recommendation is what we voted. Yeah. When do you think you'll have that? Um, <laughs> I'll do my best to, uh, I mean, I will start working on it tomorrow. I would. This is, yeah. I, I can just tell you right now, this, not this gonna is going to be a posting on Friday. Yeah. A lot of documents for yeah. Monday because I think I've Friday got a, a couple other pieces that okay. I'm trying to Whatever you get. So I think that's it. Probably mm -hmm. we'll try and be consistent yeah. with that. Be anytime before Friday is most welcome. <laughs> Do our best. The shorter we make it, the faster it will be. Right. Anything else? Otherwise, we can uh, agree it's with It's the smallest this. question. The so-called retreat. Mm -hmm. Where are we retreating? <laughs> Cash College. Oh, good. Right. And my term? hope is that we get a memo out, or an email out to everybody with the details about it and an agenda and a couple of preliminary questions. That, that is on February 2nd, officially starting at 9 o'clock and going until 2, 2.30. Okay, so I guess with that, we were agreed to be adjourned. And uh, it's 15. It's 15 p.m. You're going back up.